I'm going to do another request today, one that I'm actually kind of excited about because I've never tasted a true Philly cheese steak. I lived on the East Coast, but not close enough to Pennsylvania to ever taste it. I did a lot of research to see what was, what is a true classic original Philly cheese steak? Because there are a lot of adulterations out there. Cheese whiz? Cheese whiz? Isn't that like spreadable Velveeta? I've never tasted either, so I don't really know. Uh, bell peppers, other things in it. I even saw one recipe that didn't use any beef at all. It was made with um, prosciutto. Anyways, Philly cheesesteak supposedly contains only three ingredients, and there's a fourth option that is considered part of the original if you want to do it. It has to be made with beef ribeye. No other beef will do. Don't use hamburger. Don't use sliced roast beef. If you want to do a real original classic Philly cheesesteak, I have to think about it because I keep saying chili fees steak. Philly cheesesteak, beef ribeye. Clean, what I call clean provolone cheese, not smoked, just regular provolone cheese. You need some sort of a deli roll, like a hoagie roll or a sub roll, piece of a French bread baguette, Italian bread, whatever. And then the one option that is allowed is caramelized onion, which I'm going to use because I do like caramelized onion on a beef sandwich. So let's make chili feast steak. I've got a large sweet onion here as far as how big this is i weighed it it was 15 ounces or 425 grams i'm going to slice this up and cut it in half get the peel off I'm ready to slice my onion here i want some kind of longish so I'm just going to cut down through it once. I don't like cutting toward my fingers the way the, the chefs do on TV. So I always work the knife down to the cutting board. And then I'm cutting kind of thin slices here. I've got a skillet heating on the stove here. I'm going to put a couple, three tablespoons of olive oil in there. This is cooking olive oil, what I call cooking olive oil. It's pure olive oil. It's not extra virgin. Extra virgin will smoke at a higher temperature. Cooking olive oil, you can hit it, heat it higher. I'm going to throw the onions in there. And to caramelize these, I'm starting at medium-high heat. And as that water boils off, the temperature will start to rise. The moisture in there is keeping the temperature down. But once that moisture starts to boil away, then the temperature starts to rise. Then you turn the heat down little by little by little. By the end of the cooking time, you're down close to low on the heat. To caramelize, these are going to take about, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes. I don't need them darkly caramelized. I want them lightly caramelized. That'll improve the sweetness a little bit. So here's my beef ribeye. This is just over a pound, 1.14 pounds. I'll have to get you the metric on that. I put this in the freezer for about half an hour because I want to get it soft. I call it soft frozen. It makes it a little bit easier to slice. I was going to do this on my electric rotary slicer, but I thought with only one steak to slice up, I can do this with a knife. You can trim off the fat if you want. I'm going to leave the fat because I do know that fat improves the flavor a little bit when it comes to beef. You need a pretty good sharp knife to do this. So make sure your knives are well sharpened. So there's my beef sliced. The metric on that is just over half a kilo, about 500 grams. I took out some of the largest pieces of fat, so we'll call that 500 grams of sliced beef ribeye. I took out a couple of slices of provolone cheese. This stuff's okay, it's not what I really like, um, but the deli counter was closed when I went to the store last night. So I couldn't ask them to slice me some really good provolone, but this is okay, it'll work. And then what I was able to find was some hoagie rolls. I may have committed a sacrilege 
these have sesame seeds on it. Maybe you need real, genuine, plain hoagie rolls, but they didn't have any. Well, they had one package of plain, and they were so stale I wouldn't buy them. So I got this one instead. Nice and tender. That'll be good. So there are my onions. You can see how lightly caramelized those are. That actually took 20 minutes. So I wanted to make sure that they were nicely caramelized. I'm pushing those to one side like that. I put a little bit more oil in the pan. My heat is all the way down to low, so I'm going to bring it back up to medium. Then I'm going to put the beef in there and start cooking this beef. You just need to cook the beef until it starts to change color. This is quite cold because it was partially frozen, so cooking is going to take, well, I'll tell you how long it takes. I'll watch the clock. I'm going to move that off the heat. I don't want to cook those onions anymore. I want to just cook the beef. It depends on how much you want your beef cooked. If you want it rare, you don't cook it a whole lot. Medium, you cook it more. You don't want to brown the meat. You just want to cook it until it's changing color to the degree that you think you'll like it. My beef is cooking merrily away. It's been in the pan now for about three minutes. Gonna cut my roll open most of the way. Take my cheese, place it in there. Beautiful, like that. I got a plate ready. As soon as the beef is done, I'm gonna be ready to assemble my sandwich. Here is my beef and onion. This cooked for five minutes. I do want to give this beef a pinch of salt and grind some black pepper onto it. Okay, pull out some tongs. And then I still see some pink here. This steak should give you enough for, say, two two hoagie sandwiches. Put half of the onions on there because I do like onions in my beef sandwich. There it is. I'm ready to see what that tastes like. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a nice baked sandwich. I've never tasted a Philly cheesesteak so this should be good. If anything exciting. Yeah, that's good. I'm not much of a beef eater, but like this with cheese and caramel onions, that is good. So I'll lay that down. Excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my lunch of Philly cheesesteak. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website mobilehomegourmet.com and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.